Good afternoon. Um, today's going to be an interesting conversation. <laughs> this episode, episode number 955, if you're keeping track, and I'll give you a link at the back end of the broadcast where you can find my replays. Um, today I'm going to talk about the worst romantic quote in film history. Yes. Um, this is from Jerry Maguire, if you haven't seen the movie, where he says to her, you complete me. I think, or he says, she says to him, I forget which one it is. It's one of the most heinous things you could say and I don't know what people are going to say but it was so romantic to say you complete me that's so wonderful so perfect I disagree massively so and explain why um, and by the way this is let me lose okay yeah, let's see where I want to start um, if you haven't seen my broadcast before I do talk about love and relationships a lot over the last few weeks and last month or two I've been talking about self support and self love this ties both together very nicely so let's, let's jump in and rather than, rather than waffle too much let's jump in the topic so in the movie Jeremy Maguire there's a famous quote that people quote all the time saying you complete me where do I begin <laughs> it sounds romantic because there's something about oh that's so special he thinks he's so special he's so special that's like bullshit first of all none of us are incomplete let me be really clear about that. None of us are incomplete. And by the way, this topic, this talk today was absolutely um, informed and inspired by some conversations I had today, quite a few times today, um, at Agape and Beyond with people who wanted this explained more clearly. So I'm explaining this more clearly. So if this is relevant to you, please listen up. If it's not relevant for you, maybe it's somebody you know who needs to hear this. Feel free. So... The challenge with this statement about you complete me implies that somehow that without you, I'm incomplete. That's the inverse of that conversation. You know, you complete me. Therefore, if you're not here, I'm not complete. That's basically trying to cut off your nose to spite your face. To use a, an interesting metaphor. But the truth of it is what it does, it could open up the space to feel like we're not complete. And when you don't feel you're complete, you're in this, this wonderful conversation called codependency. Now, if you've watched my broadcast the last couple of years, I've been very clear about how, how I want to eradicate codependency from our societal vernacular because codependency is not healthy. And, that, and by the way, I was going to say that there's a parallel between relationship codependency and society codependency, but I'm not going to get into that one yet. I don't think I am anyway, but certainly this relationship one is challenging because we are so get caught up in this romantic notion because we're taught this by every love song and movie and TV show about love and relationships for the last 50 years, that being somehow codependent is actually a romantic and it's not. Well, let me, let me, let me requalify that. Being codependent is not healthy. It might seem assumed to be romantic, but it's not. Hey, Marcus, no, a long time no see. So the understanding that being codependent is not good, let me explain what it means. You complete me as a phrase. Again, if you, if you say you complete me, that implies that without you, I'm incomplete said that one already but if you feel like somehow that until somebody shows up your life isn't worth living you're not not whole you're not sustain, self-sustaining and you're not autonomous you're lying to yourself codependency in the paradigm of relationship is a massive lie propagated upon us by outside influences again like love songs movies etc the truth of who we are the power of who we are is that we we are fully enabled beings. We are whole, we are worthy, we are complete as we are. Any relationship is additive to that. But if we feel we're incomplete, so somehow that relationship is going to fill a hole within us, we're actually putting ourselves in a trap. And I'll use this as an example. If you believe that somebody else makes you happy, this is an easy metaphor to use. If you believe someone makes you happy, that means that they have control over your happiness because of what they do. Your happiness is dependent upon them. That means if they upset you, or if they don't make you happy, you could be upset with them because they didn't give you happiness. This is the wine that happens inside. So the trap we fall into is that we think that it's going to be somebody else's job, somebody else's role, somebody else's responsibility to make us feel okay. And if we don't get what we want from them, first of all, it's their fault, and secondly, we live in upset and frustration all the time. Not good qualities for healthy relationships, or healthy living for that matter. So I'm passionate about talking about what I call interdependence, which is different from codependency. And I'll get to that in a moment, because that's further down the road. 
So starting at the beginning again about how this trap we're falling into is where somehow we're not whole, we're not complete without somebody else showing up, is the most um, dysfunctional way of being in a relationship. One of the most dysfunctional ways of being in a relationship, I know, because that seed, that... Um, what's the word I'm going to use? There's a few words that show up and try to finish one fits. That way of being in a relationship, I'll start with that one first, puts us in a situation where we cannot fully function as ourselves because somehow we've given somebody else the power to control us. I use the analogy of being a puppet on strings because if you're in a relationship with somebody where you feel like their actions make you happy or upset, which a lot of people do, been there myself, done it, I know what it feels like, if that person is happy with us, we feel happy. If that person is sad with us, we feel sad. If that person is upset with us, we think something's wrong with us. That sort of wiring, and there's many, many, many different opportunities to feel that way, and many, many um, ways of labeling that, then we are basically being a puppet on their strings. Their mood controls our feelings. Their way of acting controls our feelings because we gave them the power. And codependency is an act of giving our power away when we don't actually have to do that, first of all. And secondly, it's a fake move because you're not actually giving your power away. You just believe you do. And this is, and this is getting like mind games on mind games. We as human beings, you, me, everybody else involved in the planet, are actually whole and complete as we are. We're actually spiritual beings having a human experience in my vernacular. So we are expressing ourselves as humans and we are whole. We are complete. Now, we may have been trained by our families, by our parents, by our siblings, by our peer group to act incomplete, to believe we we're not able to do that. Yes, thank you, Marcus. I appreciate the love. <laughs> Amen to that indeed. But the thing is, we are complete already. So, and this is the thing that is challenging for some people to hear. This is one thing I've learned big time for the last 12, 13 years, is I don't need a relationship to be whole. And nor do you. In fact, none of us need a relationship to be whole. Society likes to teach us that somehow we're not worthy unless we have a family, so marriage and kids and that sort of stuff. But it's a fake belief. The reason why that society, taught, society teaches us that is because society thrives with more population. But who you are is not dependent upon your marriage status or family dynamic. Now, I know I'm being <laughs> maybe self-serving by saying that because I'm single and I haven't got any kids. But the truth is, is who we are as human beings is already complete. Now, being in a relationship is again, as I said before, additive to that. Not replacing, not subtracting, but additive to that. So any relationship you choose to be in, romantic one especially, I would advise you to choose one that adds to who you already are and that somehow you don't feel you're incomplete without it. You know, to quote another famous lyric actually from a song um, by Harry Nielsen, which is, I can't live if living was without you. How tragically romantic. It's not. It's a trap. All these love songs I mentioned, I mean, pretty much 90% of all the love songs for the last 60, 70 years, and most of the movies about love and relationships, and most of the TV shows about love and relationships have been teaching us codependency. So it's not, it's not surprising we feel codependent. It's in our, not our DNA, but it's in our belief systems because we've been infused by it by all the media. And yes, the media does lie. <laughs> And most of the Hallmark movies that have been out for the last bunch of months, I'm sure, are the same thing. They're teaching codependency because it's this thing about how romance will sweep us off our feet, we'll be fine, we'll be wonderful. But the thing is, as soon as that ends, because it sometimes ends, we feel so distraught because we've been, there's a vacuum we've been stolen from. We feel like we've had our, gut, our guts ripped out. That's another symptom of codependency. Now, I'm not saying this should be unemotional because somebody breaks up with you or you don't have what you want or you do have what you want. Being emotional is okay. But being in a situation where you make your emotions dependent upon the other person is the epitome of codependency. Not only you you complete me, you control me. That's not fun. But we fall into that trap so repeatedly because codependency is a, a default perspective taught by the world. Learning to be autonomous, learning to be interdependent, meaning that we are independent beings who like to interact with each other. Interdependence is a form where we don't need anything from anybody else, but when we're with somebody else, we add together. Where in a relationship, ultimately, is not 50 50, it's 100 100. Where the sum is greater than, sorry, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. So a relationship is not 50 50, it's 100 100. So a relationship is 200% and then some because it's you and your partner and the relationship, all additive. 
nothing is less than complete. But we, but the the opportunity. I'm going to remember which one I'm going with this one. The opportunity is to grow into being fully owning who we are, and when we do that, then every single relationship around us changes. Not just the romantic ones, but even parents, siblings, co-workers, everybody around us will change when we no longer buy into the game, the trap, the in what's the word? Um, <laughs> the dance of being incomplete. True, and and let me I'm switch analogy for a second. Talking about dancing because I just came up in my thoughts. I talked a lot about how the masculine and feminine um, polarities are, ex are most exemplified for me in Argentine tango, the dance of Argentine tango. If you watch any true partner dancing routine, those partners cannot dance on their own in a partner dance effectively unless the other person's with them. However, that does not mean either one of them is incomplete. In fact, the dance is additional. The dance is is the multiplication of the two partners together. And things like Argentine Tango in particular, one of my favorite dancers to watch, there's such a beautiful um, flow between the two partners where the dance is so much more magnificent because both of them are in it. That to me is a way of explaining a relationship, not only about the masculine family and polarity, which, which works in Argentine Tango to create the structure and the flow, which is how it works together, but also watching the two partners interact together shows how much more is possible because the two partners are both whole. There is not an easy answer necessary for this. I mean, I'm giving you the, the black and white, like this is one way or the other way. But the truth is, when you, if you find yourself facing this, I don't want to say a demon, but this challenge of relationship where you keep falling into the codependent trap, I strongly encourage you to find someone who can help you, whether it's through your own work, with, um, whether it's through books or retreats, seminars, trainings, working with a coach, working with a counselor, working with a therapist, working with somebody who can guide you through the process of reconnecting back to yourself so you can heal it. That's one way of doing it. It can happen by grace, rarely, but it can happen by grace. But if you work with somebody who can guide you and support you, it's the best way to get through the place where you start to remember your wholeness again. Because for most of us, and I myself had that experience, most of us, that um, codependent paradigm was installed when we were very young. And unfortunately, it often happens because of our parents. Now, don't blame your parents. <laughs> Because for most of us, our parents learn their behaviors from their parents and their parents beyond. These, these are generational patterns that get inherited and passed down by, by behavioral expression, generation by generation by generation. But you can be the last generation to have that pattern, if you so choose, by healing it. Now, it won't change necessarily the relationship with your parents or their parents or whatever before that, but it changes everything going forward from you and everyone you interact with. The more you own your autonomy, the more you own your wholeness the more that everybody around you will transform because when you are no longer codependent they don't have any hooks into you anymore and that is true freedom so i'm just feeling into if there's anything else to talk about this Part, um, yeah okay i, I knew it was a, there was a hook because <laughs> i have something i might want to offer but i want to tie in a way that works so here's the thing for most of us we don't necessarily know how to navigate back to being whole ourselves. Because for a lot of us, we were taught that things like self-love and self-appreciation and self-confidence are somehow egotistical or even narcissistic. The truth is that when we learn to trust ourselves and come from compassion, love and support for ourselves and self-confidence, when it relies truly in who we really are as authentic whole beings, that's a transformative experience. That's where freedom comes from again that's where understanding comes from as well and i've been talking about for months now about how self-love is the key to having a healthy relationship with yourself first then with other people because that is a gateway to that but also my new offering which i call bff which is which is balance freedom and flow where you do become the best friend of yourself is a three-month deep immersive journey to actually transform your experience of relationship with yourself so you transform relationship with everybody else and again, BFF stands for balance, freedom, and flow. Because when you start to come into balance with who you are, you discover how much freedom you really have, and life begins to flow. Sounds very trite, but that's kind of how it works. And so what I'm teaching in this masterclass, which I will happily let you know about, is the link will be in the comments when I sign off, which is barryselby.com forward slash BFF. Yes, BFF. You can check it out. That is my, my passion project in a way, because I'm so clear that when we work together in this area, you will transform your experience of yourself, 
you'll transform your relationship, your, your experience of the other relationships, and you'll transform your experience of life into a whole new way of being. I am passionate about this for a reason. And it's why my work's been shifting more and more out of the relationship centric conversation, excuse me, relationship centric conversation into the relationship with self conversation. And if you have an interest in this, I invite you to keep following my broadcast and to check out the link that I'm putting in the comments. When you learn how to love yourself first and really respect yourself first, you start to choose relationships that do the same thing. Because it really comes back to when you love yourself enough, then somebody else can love you without putting hooks in you. And you don't need them to love you to feel okay. This is the dance of growth into out of excuse me, out of codependency into autonomy and into interdependency. If this interests you, let's talk. Um, I'll give you enough to think about for today. <laughs> Again, the, links will be, the link will be in the comments after as I sign off, so I mentioned that already verbally, but it's going to be in the comments as well. Um, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, I do talk about interesting stuff every single day. And this is my daily Facebook Live I do every day, usually at 5 p.m. Pacific time, is my usual go time. Um, you can join me on my personal page at facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. The replays go to my business page, and since I've got 955 of them, there's a lot out there. Although Facebook only shows about 200 of those, but I have a backup. So you go to my business page on Facebook to watch the replays, which is barryselby.author. You'll find more broadcasts there than on my personal page because my personal page has so many other posts on it. Makes sense. But if you want to watch all the broadcasts, guaranteed I can guarantee they're all there. If you go to my YouTube channel, because I back them up to YouTube, you go to youtube.com slash user slash Barry Selby. You can subscribe to my channel. There's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine. And all 950 plus broadcasts are there from newest to oldest. You can scan through those. Oh, you're welcome, Marcus. Thanks for watching and thanks for, for the love. And if you want to share this with anybody, feel free to do that. Um, I'm sure somebody can be get benefit from this besides us. <laughs> um, so YouTube channel is, is Barry Selby. The playlist is Messages from the Masculine. All my broadcasts are there. You can search through by title, keyword, whatever you want to look for and get what you want. Please check out the link in the comments because it will help you transform your life. I'm passionate about that. And I do thank you for watching as always. Please join me again tomorrow, 5 p.m. Pacific time. And uh, if you have any questions, comments, message me over social media. And again, check out the links in the comments. I thank you for watching. I will see you again tomorrow, same time, same channel. And as always, please take care of yourself. I'll see you again soon.